story from Lusty Lady, circa 1990. At the Lusty Lady Theater, there were two workstations. The stage, where half a dozen women strolled languidly around, barely clothed. There was a management rule that you could wear a garment that covered your breasts or your puss, but never both at once. <laughs> Surrounded by window booths, where the men peered in to look. And the private pleasures booth, where you got to have the as advertised, one-on-one, -on -one, talk to a real live nude girl experience. The window between the booth and the hallway could be closed with a curtain once a customer had been lured inside, and the window in intercom between the customer and the live nude, etc., left nothing to the imagination except the sense of touch. And of course, we provided that ourselves. The entire place was a temple to masturbation, except that the girls on the main stage couldn't as easily devote themselves to this practice as we could in private pleasures. On stage, we were encouraged to stay on the move and finger ourselves only desultorily. And even that was a problem until I began to encourage use of baby wipes between bouts. Otherwise, we would also leave our own pussy flora on the handlebars between the windows and give each other yeast infections. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the stage where I was surrounded by wild child women of every stripe, shaved headed dykes wearing femi wigs, rocker cheek girlfriends who almost all, as stereotype predicted, were helping to fund their no good boyfriends bands. <laughs> They were a punk scene maker, and you've not ever heard of any of those bands either. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> punk scene makers, women's studies majors taking postmodern feminist theory to the streets, or rather to the bank. Exactly one moonlighting downtown San Francisco executive secretary who, bonus, was still nursing her four-year-old, so she lactated. <laughs> a pack of aspiring performance artists, and me a grad student in sexology. Well, it was like a lab. Plus, as a bi who had recently reintegrated the mysterious male of the species into her repertoire, I got to study up on penis variety, right and left-handed male masturbation techniques, and other interesting details I'd forgotten since high school or never knew. <laughs> on stage and backstage, the women had an easy camaraderie that eluded most all women's spaces I'd ever been part of. Our lockers back there were piled high with wigs and drag, and we shared makeup tips, stories, and sometimes intimate time after work that most of the women who liked women had outside girlfriends already. It was just beginning to be a big status symbol for SF Dykes to be able to date a stripper. Some of my best friends, 20 years later, are women I met on that stage. My very first day, I met my dear friend Wasabi, lately emigrated from Santa Cruz, who surprised me by pointing out another dancer, Zizi, and informing a customer who was watching her hungrily that Zizi had been raised by a wolf. <laughs> Wasabi, hotter than anything, was also so named because she wore one of those stretchy sleepless dresses you could buy in 1989. The whole thing, the perfect celadon green color of a dab of wasabi. She strolled across the stage in us. Now I want you to picture, picture those, those, picture those dresses. All right, must. She strolled across the stage and at her splendid ass, rolling it up her thighs and over her cheeks as she went. She didn't have to touch it. Right. I, I hope you got that in your mind. I never did figure out how she was able to do that, but it was a stunning crowd pleaser of a move. On one side of the stage, she'd be clothed, and by the time she got across, she'd be half naked. I liked the stage all right, but I liked the private pleasures booth even better. On stage, we couldn't easily talk to the customers. The rock music we danced, or rather right to, was way too loud, and you couldn't tell someone your name without shouting. And as it turned out, I like talking to the customers almost as much as masturbating for a living. I was incredulous when a few of the less sexually identified girls said they faked orgasms when they did this. Good God, it was bad enough to do it with your lousy lay of a rocker boyfriend. You were only reinforcing bad behavior. But faking it on yourself? <laughs> that was incomprehensible to me. And mind you, that and the woman made this the best job I'd ever had. And the only real downside was having to punch a time clock, which I considered there and at the pizza place where I worked years ago, fundamentally insulting. The booth worked like this. Picture a small five by five square room covered floor to ceiling with red shag carpeting. I entered by a door in the back that attached to a tiny dressing room. In front of me, a large window allowed me to see my customer sitting on a bench in a small plain booth of his own. It's only other furnishings, a box of tissues and a trash can. To my right, another window let onto the hallway where I could survey the scene when I didn't have a customer in there with me. When I did, red curtains obscured the view. Between me and my visitor, there was a contraption where he could put money and I could hit a switch that turned on the lights and intercom. The better to see and hear each other with, my dear. 
When alone, I had another intercom I could use to broadcast my availability down the hallway and into the lobby. Hey, gents, it's Minx in here in the talk booth, and I am so lonely in here. Come right up my night. Tell me a story. Strictly speaking, it was not always night. The lusty lady opened at 7 a.m., supporting <laughs> hordes of downtown worker bees with that necessary wank to calm them down before the big meeting. And uh, <laughs> lunchtime was busier than most of the evening hours. Customers were not always white collar. So those who were had all developed an act. Did they advise each other to do this, I wonder, or each develop the idea by himself of tossing their ties over their shoulders the way men do when they're in a restaurant with <laughs> <eating soup? laughs> My stage name was Minx Manx. Stage names were not optional, but required, and I wanted a cat name, but all the feline <laughs> ones were taken. There was a kitten, a tigress, a kitty, and a cat. Manx was not spoken for, though, and while not sexy enough for a first name, it worked fine paired with Minx, the moniker I'd grown fond of when reading the tragically brilliant A Confederacy of Dunces. There were also many women named after exotic spices. Wasabi was one of this group. And a surprising number whose names reference the great rivers of the world. <laughs> One night I was lonely in the booth. It had been slow, and time ticked past much faster when engaged in talking, masturbating, or both, so I hoped to lure in a customer with my trusty intercom. There were a few guys in the place, and one who kept looking at me around the corner of the hallway would vanish behind a pillar whenever he saw me looking at him, <laughs> hiding out. But then he'd pop out again. He was a furtive, ratty little man of indeterminate middle age, the kind of fellow whose suit coat elbow patches covered actual holes, not a professorial look he had affected on purpose. <laughs> I realized at last as I tried to sweet talk him in, come on baby, I see you. Why are you so shy? Come in and talk to me, I can just tell you have something special you wanna to talk to me about. He saw that he was trying not to be observed by any of the other men in the place as he made his way down the hallway toward me. At last, he covered the last few feet of open ground and scurried into the booth, locking the door. He seemed just as nervous in private. He stammered and hemmed as I welcomed him in. Um, 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 is it, is it, is it true that I can, can, can ma ma masturbate in here? Yeah. Well, yes, baby, of course. Please make yourself comfortable. Unzip. Let's start feeling good together. Do you have anything special you want us to talk about tonight? Did he ever? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was hoping I could, I could ask you to say something for me while I, I ma ma masturbated. Can I just ask you to say it and repeat it until I'm, 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 I'm all done? This was very common in private pleasures. Most men had some sort of fantasy they'd like to experience through narration while they jerked off, or a particular kind of language they wanted to hear as an oral accompaniment to the feelings they could generate with their hands. Since they were essentially paying to do what they could do at home for free, the visuals and the auditory part of this experience became supremely important, the real reason they were there. Of course, baby, I'll say pretty much anything you like. What would you like me to say? But, 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 but please ju just repeat this until I'm done, he said again. The words, I do not believe in the improbable God of the Ape <laughs> <laughs> 